Hello everyone and welcome to Skylines Guidelines. This is a series of tutorials where I'm going to show you how to do some advanced road laying, um, some urban planning in a semi-realistic manner, and some just general design for the game Cities Skylines, which has been uh, a game that I've been really enjoying lately. So, the first thing I'm going to show you on this video are some of the nitty-gritty details on how road laying works. I'm sure you're already sort of familiar with the general guidelines and um, the zoning. But to get into some of the details here, we're going to look at the numbers. So when you lay a stretch of road, you'll notice these lines pop up. These lines are 10 cells apart. A cell is one of these squares in a zone. And this is 8 meters by 8 meters, if you are going to bother going into doing any um, modeling for the game. Then you might want to know that scale. Otherwise, you just need to know one cell is one block distance. And as I mentioned, the guideline is 10 cells apart. Now, if you draw off of another road to the guideline, it's at the perfect distance to best fill out a zoned area. Um, as the roads cover up one cell on either side, you end up with four cells off of one road and four cells off the other. So you have cell eight cells straight across which creates a nice system for laying out blocks. Now there's other ways of doing zoning, but um, this is the way to maximize your coverage. And in another video, I'll show you some of the other ways you can do this. If you want to do the same type of maximized zoning off of a four or a six lane road, or an avenue as you usually call them based off of my habits from SimCity 4, you're going to need to pull one extra tile past the guideline as the avenues cover two tiles from their center line. And furthermore, if you're going to draw a avenue parallel to an avenue, you're going to need to pull an extra two tiles to make up that difference and get the full eight tile coverage and zoning. Now if you want to do something other than just grids, you're probably going to draw some angles. And there are ways to measure out those angles. Uh, 45 is probably something that you'll want fairly common. The easiest way to draft that up is to draw a perpendicular road the same distance. In this case I'm going to the next guideline five t or ten tiles away and if you connect those two it's going to be on a perfect 45 compared to your original grid. When drawing roads out at an angle sometimes it's useful to turn off the snap tool if you don't have a specified angle you want to drag it off and you'll notice that once you get past the 45 the road itself will start bending as the game doesn't recognize angles past 45 degrees. If you see anything beyond 45, it's kind of just faking it. I use this kind of road a lot when I'm trying to do something similar to a realistic off-ramp, but in practicality, this has um, no difference than a 45 degree road in terms of vehicle speed. 45s can be important as Vehicles don't lose any speed when they're exiting a road at a 45 degree angle compared to a 90 degree intersection. So this can be a very useful technique when you're creating highways or other high capacity roads. Other than the straight lines of grids and 45 degree angles, another feature you'll commonly want to make are circles, usually for roundabouts. The way this is done is using the curved road tool and drawing the tangent lines. When you click down uh, with the curved road tool, the um, ghosted image you'll see here is actually a tangent line. I'm just going to draw up to the next guideline, so 10 squares over, and then I'm going to draw 90 degrees over to the next guideline, and that's going to create a 90 degree arc, as both the end and the beginning points are going to be tangent to those straight lines that I drew. And I'll just continue this, going from grid line to grid line, all the way around in a circle. And that's going to create the closest to a perfect circle you can in the game. It's not perfect as there is a bit of a notch in the corners. You can draw other sizes. Uh, usually to do this you'll want to fr first find your center point. I know this is going to be just halfway through to this grid line here of my other circle. And then you just need to count your radius. So say if I want to make a circle uh, with a diameter of 8, I want to make a radius of 4. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll draw my tangent out perpendicular to my center line. I'm going to go the same number, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to go over the 4, uh, doing the same idea with the 90 degree arc. 
and then they'll just continue that around. One, two, three, four. And then to the center line, one, two, three, four, to the center, and then four over and over. And that will create a smaller circle. The large circles connect well to other roads, uh, particularly at the starting points at the 45s and just generally anywhere in between. The smaller circles will connect well at your starting points, but if you draw off the 45s, it tends to distort the tangents of the original layout and you may need to redraw some of these arcs. That covers everything I want to show you in this episode of Skylines Guidelines. I'm going to be keeping this episode short and to the point so you can always come back and review something you might have forgotten. Um, there will be other episodes focusing on different areas such as zoning, street hierarchy system for traffic flow, uh, interchanges on highways, service placement, etc. Let me know if there's anything else you want to see and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to catch more of these episodes. Thanks for watching and take care.